Hi, today I'd like to introduce you to our solution on distributed real-time simulation using Plex and the RTBox. Plex is a comprehensive tool for the simulation of power electronic systems on a system level. This includes several physical domains, namely the electrical, thermal, magnetic and mechanical domains. Also a complete library to model control systems using block diagrams, state machines and C scripts or DLLs is provided. The models developed in Plex can later be executed on our real-time platform, called the RTBox for hardware-in-a-loop testing or rapid control prototyping. Due to our complete toolchain from offline modeling over code generation to real-time simulation, this is an easy-to-use, one-stop solution. The RTBox as a standalone unit now just got more powerful by the ability to exchange data between RTBoxes. This allows the user to extend the number of IOs of one box and to split the model calculation onto different units. This way the model step size can be reduced by at the same time increasing the simulation accuracy. All this is possible with the four high-speed serial links on the back side using SFP connectors. Different scenarios are possible. Boxes can be used in a simple bidirectional point-to-point -point connection or more complex scenarios are possible with either a daisy-chained or master-slave configuration. The mentioned topologies get especially powerful and useful with the ability to synchronize the start and execution of a model to an arbitrary master box. Let's do an example to see how easy it is to set up an SFP connection between two RT boxes. As a hardware setup, we have two targets powered up and connected with an SFP cable in the back using SFP port A. In the first stage, we will just connect the two units via SFP to exchange data. In the second and third stage, we will also synchronize the execution as well as the startup of the two RT boxes. Now let's start to build our models in Plex. The demo will consist of two 50 Hz sine wave sources, each running on a separate unit. One of the sine waves is then transmitted to the other box via SFP. Let's put them in a separate subsystem, each representing a separate real-time target. One is called box A and the other is called box B. To exchange data between the boxes, we can add the SFP in and out blocks from the target support library. This will automatically add an in and out port to the respective subsystem that allows us to connect the two subsystems also in an offline simulation. Let's also add a scope to monitor the two signals from both targets. We can now perform an offline simulation to check the desired result from our model. We can limit the simulation time to 20 milliseconds and after that perform an offline simulation. Here in the scope we can now see that, that there are two identical 50 Hz sine waves. Ok, now let's deploy this on our real setup. Therefore, we have to enable code generation for each subsystem. And then go to the coder tab to specify important parameters for our target, such as the discretization step size, where we choose one microsecond for box B. In the target tab, we need to choose our physical target. Here we have box B available, since it is connected to the host computer via an Ethernet cable. After that, we press build and upload the generated executable to the target. On the lower left, one can see that box B is running. We do the same for box A. It is also available in the list of targets. Click again build. and check on the lower left. 
that box A is now running. We can also connect to the target using the external mode and observe the waveforms in the scope that are now acquired from the real targets box A and B. Interestingly, there is a continuous phase shift between the red and green curve. This means the models are not running synchronously on box A and B. This is something we want to change and is following in the next step. Now let's create the synchronous execution of both models. Therefore, we need to go to the coder tab and make box B use the same clock as box A. In the interconnect tab, select use clock from master and the corresponding SFP port A. After this, click build and wait until box B has restarted. The model is now loaded on box B and we can use the external mode to check the two sine waves in the scope. When zooming in, one can see that the phase shift between the sine waves remains constant and therefore we have synchronous model execution. In the last step, also the startup of both model calculations should be synchronized. To do this, we need to first stop the model execution via the web interface, which is included in the coder menu. Press the desktop icon and scroll down to the bottom of the page. Click Stop and observe how the model execution has stopped on box A. Do the same for box B. Here we select Synchronize Startup with SFPA and click Build. Notice that box B is flashing the blue LED to show that it is waiting for the master box A to start. After this, select the same option for box A and click Build. Once the build is finished, both blue LEDs light up normally, which indicates that both targets are now running. When checking again the scope via the external mode, we can see that not only the model execution, but also the model startup of both targets is now synchronized. This concludes the demo about SFP using Plex and the RT box. Please visit our website, plexum.com, for more information and to get your trial license today. Thanks for watching.